Hey everyone, and welcome to the I'm the Mama podcast, where we discuss the ins, the outs, and everything in between of motherhood. I'm your favorite host, Ashley L, and I'm excited to be joining you today. Uh, as you see, I am joined by the Smiths, which are amazing, amazing friends of ours. And then I am also joined by my wonderful husband. The Smiths have three boys, and uh, we're going to have a good conversation with them today. But before doing that, y'all know I got to always start out with my shout outs, right? So to shout out today, it's going to be to the parents that just allow their kids to be just that, kids. <laughs> and I feel like the world places like so much in front of us at times. And so just allowing them to be in their innocence and just in their youthfulness. You know, they grow so fast. Before you know it, I know me and Mo have talked about it a few times. Before you know it, those little bitty babies are talking about, you know, their senior year and getting ready for college and filling out applications and see, and and tests that they have to take to prepare and then boom they're gone. So again, just shout out to those parents that just allow their kids to be that and that's so fitting for our topic today because we are going to be discussing youth sports, fun versus force. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and kick it off because I feel like we're going to take up the whole entire time of today talking about this. And that's OK. I want to kick it off just kind of asking you all, you know, do you think it's important for kids to be involved as youth to be involved in sports and why? Yeah, okay. I do. I think that's important. I think it's important for kids to be a part of something, you know, something that they can see their progress. I think it's important for them to, you know, make friends, you know, team building, you know, self-confidence comes through a lot of sports too. So I think it's really important for them to, to be a part of that. And I think that team building and just working, you know, with, with other kids their age, just socializing with kids their age, I think it's really important. It goes character. Yeah, there's a huge social development aspect to uh, youth sports, uh, a lot of stuff at home is about the individual kid. And sports is a way to early introduce them if you're not involved in daycare. And sometimes even with the kid in daycare, they still don't get integrated as much. But sports is a way to set a goal. Mm -hmm. So at school or daycare, you have lessons to learn, but not necessarily goals to accomplish. But if you are on a sports team, you have a like-minded goal to accomplish and all of y'all are able to work together, you figure out how to work together to accomplish that. And it also develops that dynamic of mentorship. It's that player coach, just like a student teacher, just like a child parent, and it teaches them, hey, these people are trying to make me better. Let me get better. That's good. What do, what do you think, Mr. Lance? I mean, more of the same thing. Ultimately, I didn't join sports until, well, not like official sports, I guess you could say. So I did the T-ball as I was when I was little, but Joining football in eighth grade did help me more with teamwork, uh, growth in terms of organized cooperation, you know, kind of thing. So I got, I got a brother, but it's different just with me and him. So we never had to ultimately play with, you know, 10 other people that you didn't necessarily know. So you got to know more people. And like, like, like Steve said, you were working for a common goal, whether you like them or not kind of thing. And it forced you to work with people that you – probably wouldn't have outside of this sport. Mm -hmm. So again, it just helps you become well-rounded. Yeah, I know my parents, like, I'm the only child. And so obviously I was involved in every single sport that they could think of just to keep me busy, kind of like what you all have mentioned, putting me around, um, you know, others as well. Something that I may have lacked of not having a sibling in the household, I'm able to develop with my teammates and, you know, um, my coaches and things like that. So definitely understand that. I mean, do you feel that there is a certain age? I heard you just mentioned that eighth grade is kind of when you got started. I know for me, you know, I was and I guess I can cheer, consider cheering a sport. I was cheering at three. Don't don't do that. I was cheering at three. And then from there, it went to like t-ball, to softball, to basketball, to soccer. Like they got me into everything. But do y'all think that there's a certain age to really get them started? Because, you know, sometimes now they got stuff starting at two. Mm -hmm. 
Um, when they're old enough to understand, I think two is a little bit too early for me. I'm going to say four or five uh, when they're old enough to, one, not only understand, but two, give you feedback. Hey, I like this, or I don't like this, or this is what I like about this, or this is what I don't like about this. So you can kind of have a dialogue instead of it being just me inserting you into this because this is what I think is best for you. As a four or five year old, you can say it back to me, hey, mommy, daddy, I don't really like this. Or, hey, mommy, daddy, I really love this. So, okay, that just brought up another question because to me, as a two year old, you're out there playing, like you're having fun. So, kind of going back to the topic of like fun, are we getting them involved for them to learn all of the things that we talked about? and trying to figure out if this is something that they want to do and continue with? Or is like, is there fun involved in this as well? Because as a two-year-old, they're just running soccer-wise, running back and forth, just having a good time and learning and learning those social skills and things like that with other kids, which I think is good as well. I think me, you talked about this before, Steve, like at two, I'm not opposed to kids starting at two or three, you know, I'm not opposed to it. But at the same time, at that age, it's just exercise. Ultimately, you're just you're right. just exercising. So right. it depends on price. The price is like high. It's like I can exercise for free, you know, ultimately. But I don't know what prices are for two year olds, three year olds doing sports uh, kind of thing. But I'm not opposed to it. Like you said, they still meet friends, still get to associate with other people. But it's just exercise. They're not going to be that coordinated to really play that sport. Because this is about exposure. Right. Correct. It's not necessarily about competition at that age. So yeah. it's not too early to be exposed. I think personally, it's too early to take something from it. Mm-hmm. Besides, hey, mommy, you know, I'm just out here running around right. getting my energy out so I can take a nap. Uh, but it's about that exposure. I think attention span, too. You know, like if you're really doing like an organized sport, mm-hmm. how much are you retaining of really understanding what the goal is that you're trying to accomplish? So I do think. You know, at two and three, you're just trying to get them busy, maybe get a routine of, hey, this is what we do on Mondays and Tuesdays and Saturdays or whatever. So I do think, to your point, Julian, you know, as I think it's good, but, you know, when you start taking sports more seriously, you know, you can kind of have that balance of fun versus, okay, this is, you know, something that you need to pay attention to, like the basics to see if it's something that you're even interested in. So I know, Steve, going back to something that you mentioned in regards to, getting them acclimated for them to be able to verbalize whether they enjoy the sport or not. Um, You know, if your child came back and said, Hey, I don't like playing this, Mm -hmm. then what are they done with that sport or are they going to another sport or you're letting them choose? They can go choose something else of their liking. Like let's talk about that a little bit. Well, we're going we're gonna to have to dig into a little bit of the why. Um, and that's mostly because kids are hot and cold. And we know from having kids, they like food one day, love it the next, the next day after that. So we have a, he's now a six-year-old who does soccer and Taekwondo. And he'll be like, hey, I don't really like Taekwondo. But it's because he wants to play his game instead of going to um, the uh-huh. session that week. But then he goes to testing and gets a new color belt. And all of a sudden, it's, again, the best thing that ever happened to him. So yeah. it's they, they're really hot and cold. So we kind of dig into the why. If it feels like it's a punishment going, then it's not worth the time sacrifice or the monetary sacrifice like Julian mentioned. But if it's just because I want to play my Switch instead of going to practice today, uh, we're going to talk about that. I think you have to also pay attention to like the consistency. Like, Are they consistently saying it? You know, like you said, we took Jackson didn't want to go to Taekwondo on Saturday. And it normally wasn't a day he normally goes. It was usually Tuesdays and Thursdays. So Saturday was kind of, you know, now the basketball goes, you can, you know, take an extra day at Taekwondo. He did not want to go, but then he was had so much fun when he got there. And leaving there, he had so much fun. So it's just like, I think that's a really good call out is the why. Is it because you'd rather be doing something else or, you know, let's go ahead and push you to continue to do it because when you leave, you know, you're filled with joy and you can see the friends that you don't see so often. So mm-hmm. I do think it is, you know, if he's consistently saying, okay, you know, if he's leaving saying that he didn't want to be there and that's like repeated behavior, then it's like, okay, this is no longer fun and this is forced. So let's try to find something else that is a better fit. Look, that's good to know. So I'm, I'm taking notes for that. Obviously, we don't have <laughs> that old just yet. So I'm, I'm glad y'all said that. Yeah. Uh, I'm also thinking of in terms of like, 
a kid just wanting to quit because it felt hard or something. Mm -hmm. Right. So I wouldn't let you quit the first minute you say it's hard because anything new is going to be hard ultimately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'd at least have you, you know, fight through, let's say that season to where you're not quitting or whatever. But again, if you're like, like most of you're talking about, you don't like it every year or something, I'm not going to have you play that sport because you're going to get hurt out there trying to go half speed or something when somebody else is going full speed because they love it. Right. Or even drop down to like instructional instead of competitive. It's like, oh, my coach right. is too mean or my coach is too hard. Well, he's being competitive and trying to make the right. best five and under, six and under, 10 and under team. It's like, all right, let's go down to a more instructional recreational league and you can be more about fun. And I wouldn't want to teach that kid that you can ultimately quit at the first sign of, right. you know, over and over again kind of thing. Like, like you don't have to right. quit for anything. I just don't like it. I'm going to stop doing it. It's like, nah, yeah. you got to finish something. <laughs> We actually experienced that with our other one. Our son, he's 15 now. I think maybe he was 9 or 10. He was played tactical football. He's done flag football, soccer, basketball, like all of the sports. And so we're like, okay, let's do tactical football. Tackle. Just tackle. Whatever it's called. You know, like the, the physical football, not the flag. Um, and so he hated it. He absolutely hated it every single time it was practiced. He's just not a competitive person by nature. He's a big kid, so it's natural for people to think, oh, okay, you should play football. Or people would see him in the grocery store or out on the street and just like, who do you play for? Come play for us. But he's just a gentle giant. And we tried it. We completed the season. Although, like you said, he did not want to go. It's like, okay, well, let's finish what we started. And if we realize through this journey that we can get to the other side of it, or if it's consistently dreadful, then, you know, that's when you just got to take your hands off and say, okay, this is not your thing. And let's find something else. So one thing I know when it comes to, unless the things have changed, like most practices aren't multiple times a week, unless if it's a school affiliated activity. Mm -hmm. So if it's recreational, you know, you may have practice twice a week, um, maybe sometimes once a week. So I know one thing that my parents used to do for me, they actually took out the time to learn the sport. <laughs> so that when it comes to, if it was something I found challenging, then we're outside practicing together outside of those times where we actually had practice just so I can continue to build on, you know, learning and developing so I can become better at whatever it was that I found challenging sports wise. So um, is that one thing that I know if our son decided to do it, that would probably be something I could see myself doing just from getting that same thing from my parents. But what's you all take like with your sons, like you mentioned your 15 year old as well as the six year old are y'all out there kind of practicing with them as well and what has that experience been like has it made them be more willing to keep going because of the help that you all are providing so monique is huge on the whole family doing everything together all the time <laughs> nice <laughs> so it's all five of us attending whatever event this is whatsoever but it works out well because you feel well supported you feel like you had a fan club and even more family comes my mom comes um if her brother's in town they come different things like that um and they feel well supported but i'm gonna take it to the next level of not just learning the sport to help it help your child with it i actually stepped in and coached the team mm -hmm. um for jackson mm -hmm. and uh, um it was a volunteer league of course um, and they didn't have a coach assigned to that team. They asked parents to volunteer, and I stepped up because that's in my nature. And that's probably the most excited that I've seen Jax about soccer. He's like soccer. And this was his third year playing. So the first two years, he definitely liked it. So we were going to continue doing it. But when I stepped in to coach, it was like a renewed or a, a, a elevated energy for him and now it's like hey dad are you gonna coach my soccer team again or are you gonna coach my basketball team or blah 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 because you just love that involvement even just talking to the other kids and they on the team is just like that's my it's not that's coach like that's my dad yeah come on over here with my dad blah 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 like that and i think for me i i've never played a sport i don't know much about sports i'm glad that he is sports heavy we both didn't know about soccer you know we don't know the rules of soccer we didn't understand soccer we got a soccer net and put it up in the backyard and was just like, let's just work on footwork. You know, like, let's like, what does it look like to be a goalie? What does it look like to, you know, we'll switch. Hey, let's do, you know, 20, I'm guarding you and then you're guarding me to just kind of keep it fun. And like you say, when you, I could imagine actually for you, I won't speak for you, but it's more fun when your parents are involved, right? Like it takes it where, okay, they're actually interested in my development, my growth, my success of it. So I think that that is huge. Um, 
and and yeah, I mean, Stephen knows like, almost every other sport except for soccer. So everything is learning curve for me. I ask a lot of questions and like, hey, why 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 does the refs call this? You know, I, I try to I try to be engaging. That know? makes sense. So I want to say kind of a little spin a little bit because what I know what we've been talking about is more so on the recreational aspect. Um, but I know uh, three of us, you know, we we played sports and stuff before um, in school. And so, like I kind of mentioned, when it comes to playing in school, you know, you probably have practice four, if not five days a week or the game two times a week. And then those other days you're practicing. Right. And so just wanting to ask you all's opinion, as kids get older, sometimes. Well, let me read the statistic first and then we'll jump into that. Um, So CDC data from 2020. It shows that just over one half of children ages six through 17, which is 54%, participated in sports during the 12 months, okay? Now, the percentage of children that participated in the sports was higher for boys, 56%, compared to girls being 52%, and for children ages 12 through 17 years, it was 55.6% compared to children's age, children's ages 6 through 11 being 52 percent now one more thing i want to add to that according to a website parentstogether.org about 70 percent of kids stop playing sports by the age of 13 because according to a poll from the national alliance for youth sports the reason being is just not fun anymore so i want to go back to kind of what we were just discussing your child's amazing let's just say they're amazing they're a star they are a dynamite basketball player, but they come and say, hey, mom, dad, I don't want to play anymore. Why not? It's just not fun anymore. But you know that they're phenomenal at it. What do you do? <laughs> Dads? <laughs> Both of y'all <laughs> breathing hard. <laughs> you said you're phenomenal at it. Your I would, is great. You I would like to Go ahead. No, I was about to say, if you're great at it, like if you do this effortlessly and you're like just, I, I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily just say you're going to play no matter what. I would say, like you said earlier, I would ask why and then say, what else are you going to do? Like, what else do you plan on doing? Like, do you plan on not playing this to do this or you just want to quit and do nothing? It's more so like, what's your ultimate other goal? And I guess this is more so for like high school wise. I don't know necessarily like right. elementary school kind of thing, but high school, if you're just phenomenal and you just say, I want to quit this, then I'd, I'd ask why most definitely. And that why can't be superficial. It can't be Correct. surface level of I'm just tired of or it's not fun because they're, they're likely, I won't say there has to be, there likely is some hidden agenda behind it. It's maybe I've developed a passion for something else that it outweighs my passion for this sport photography, dance, an uh, instrument, uh, social, I mean, um, like going out and being socially active, like, you know, fighting for black power and such like that. Um, and I don't think my parent will understand me coming from that point of view. So I'm just going to say, I don't like it and it's too hard. So we got to dig a little bit deeper. So I would likely reluctantly let them, him or her, let them take a break and see if they miss it. Or like Julian said, see what they choose to replace it with. Because maybe it's me who thinks that just be, just because you're good at it doesn't mean you want to do it. Right. Uh -huh. So maybe it's just me who wants them to do it because I know they can have that level of success, but they won't be personally fulfilled or happy with it. So I have to take a step back and say, this isn't making them happy. It makes me happy, but it's not making them happy. And that matters more to me than my kids participation in this sport now if they don't want to do it and their why is whatever i guess you could say does the why matter so like you said let's say exactly your, your example of let's say football or basketball mm -hmm. to dance so if your son says i don't want to do football because i want to dance does that matter or no i like like, like does the why matter i guess you could say yeah it does and i have to listen to it it's not a decision that I would make for me. All right. uh, but again, I got to weigh my kids' happiness heavy. Right. It's good that that's being said. 
because what we've seen lately, you know, social media just kind of presents different things. I know I've heard that some of these eight and under, seven and under, I know we we were just talking about high school. Y'all moved it up to high school. I was still talking about the youth. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like seven and under having scouts at these games, scouting these kids to be a part of their team. Um, I, I mean, I don't know if y'all recall, I think it was a year ago or less out in Texas where a coach at a youth game was coaching. Mm -hmm. Something went left, something went wrong. Something about the score, yeah. And now this guy is dead. This coach is dead because a parent took his life because they didn't like the call or the argument that was taking place. It progressed into something and you end up shooting and killing somebody because of a game. Mm -hmm. So how far is too far? Your kid is good. You see them being successful. But then I felt like how far as a parent is taking it too far. Like like you mentioned earlier, when it kind of becomes more of you, that's my thing. When it becomes like, no, I see you being successful. You're going to keep doing this. And even if the child does like it, I feel like something like that will end up making them not like it. Yeah. But they're not going to be willing to verbalize it right. because they see how much you care about it. But I'm going to let y'all kind of give y'all opinion on that. Yeah, okay. I think that um, when it comes to sports, I think there should be some boundaries where, you know, if you're not the parent and the coach, I think that you need to let the coaches and, you know, the volunteers be the ones to man the game. You know what I mean? To like, you know, make sure, you know, let them do their thing. And I think that parents should stay out of it unless, you know, you're not agreeing with what the coach is saying to your specific kid or if you feel like, you know, maybe they're just being too hard. I think that's okay to just, you know, maybe come to the sidelines or, you know, maybe speak to the coach afterwards. But I think that when I hear situations like that, it's the parents that are way too involved. And it's just like, wait a minute, you know, let to be some boundaries of, you know, let the coach do their thing and be parents from the sidelines. Don't don't coach from the sidelines and, you know, definitely don't jump on the field or in the game or on the court. I just and think. I'm not putting assumptions, but my thought is, the the fact of seeing dollar signs in your child is what brings you to that point. Cause what else would it be? Right. Like you see my child's gonna be the next duh, duh, duh. I'm gonna say Michael Vick because I'm from Atlanta. <laughs> Without all the other stuff, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should say Jalen, Jalen Hunt. <laughs> okay. Your child's gonna be the next one. And so you see that, you see that development. And so I feel like that's when parents kind of get a little bit too involved. Well, there's also some pride in there. Pride, Uh, okay. Alongside the money, it's, hey, I don't feel like my child is either being treated fair, play the right amount of minutes, or treat or or used in the way that I think my child my child should best be used. And it comes in, it comes comes across like I know pretty much better than you. Because I know my child better than you, I know how to put my child in this game better than you. Mm. Uh, in essence, it becomes that form of a um, pride issue. And another layer that we have to look at is some people see it as their way out. And as you talk about dollar sign, mm. so you have to ask yourself, how hard would you fight for your way out? If this is your future, this is your meal ticket, this is what gets you out of the hood, this is what mm-hmm. keeps the kid out of the hood, such like that, brings your whole family up. How far would you go for your kid? Mm. Who's going to save your life one day in your eyes? I feel like that's so much pressure. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you say. I feel like that's so much pressure to put on a child. But go mm-hmm. ahead. I mean, yeah, I would say that part is true in terms of like I would say a parent shouldn't look to their kids for their way out technically, unless their kid is great at it and loves it and says, you know, kind of like I'm gonna put this on my back and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be your way out kind of thing. You know, right. they, they do that more so high school wise, not necessarily elementary school. But I would say, kind of even like the little kid pageant type of stuff. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't force your kid to do it, trying to relive your dreams in them, or like you said, as far as your way out. I think most of the violent stuff comes 
starting with what you said, Steve, in terms of you think, you know, you're treating my kid wrong or let's say a ref kind of thing, you know, this is my team, you're cheating against us or whatever. But then the next level above that, I becomes more so turns into like ego wise. And none of that violence would be because of the game anymore. It's just more so right. you're a grown person. I'm a grown person. You said something crazy to me. I said something crazy to you. And now all of a sudden we're just ultimately ego against ego. Right. And it's never really eventually continually about that sport anymore. It's just. Or the kids. Right. 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 Not about the kids. kids at all. It's just we're adults. And now all of a sudden you yelled at me in public and I'm not having it. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Right. I mean, we need to separate that from the game and keep it more so about the kids. Ultimately. Especially when you talk about people who are coming from an entitled place. I think the shooting involvement in Texas, it was a former NFL player's brother who yeah. actually committed the murder. So if they have lived that family life of entitlement, like this is the next fill in the blank because it's in his genes. It's just like, you're not going to stop that. And you're not going to check me on that. Now, I'm not opposed to kids being, not necessarily kids, but I guess, I guess kids and parents and teachers being that not serious that early, but putting them in the sport that early. Because okay. sometimes the whole thing about nature versus, uh, what is it? Nature versus... Nature? Yeah, that. Mm-hmm. Like that. Ultimately, it, it would benefit them the earlier they're in it, the longer they're in it kind of thing. So somebody, let's say me, coming in eighth grade, and now versus 12th grade, I, I've only played five years. Versus somebody else who's played since they were three. You've been playing longer, so you might be better than I am, whatever, because they've groomed you to be this player. Right. So it does help sometimes. But as to where I wouldn't, like, make you do it, you know, we're not even doing chores anymore because you're at practice all day. It's like, I would not I would not let you be a kid. Feel like that. Right. Mm. Okay. So I want to end it with this last thing. Going back, we all kind of agree that there are certain boundaries. I've heard that a few times tonight boundaries that should take place when it comes to sports. So I want you to vision this with me. Your child is on a team. We, we've we just discussed how we are as parents when it comes to sports. But then they're on a team with some parents that may vision it a little bit differently and a little bit more seriously, right? What are some boundaries that you would like implemented in these youth sports being that your child is involved with other people. Like Monique said um, earlier, limited parental involvement in the heat of the moment. Even if it's a, hey, parents sit on that side of the field or court and the coach and the team are on this side of the field and the court Mm -hmm. uh, so that there's physical space in between. Because even sometimes that space will be enough to cool off a hot head as they are coming at you. Maybe not. But it, it, it provides that opportunity. Say parents can't come watch their kids or I can't expect a parent to just sit there quietly and hold their hands in their lap the whole. They're going to be passionate about it. And I want them to be because I want them to cheer hard for their kids um, at the same time. But if you can give me some space, sit me on this side. I mean, maybe have some form of a security presence. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that. Um, there, I mean, I know the temperature about the police is off right now but some form of some kind of security presence there as a visible deterrent like hey let me not embarrass my child because this could go way left real fast and prayerfully that presence of mind will overcome you and not that seeing red blackout will overcome you and you and cooler heads will prevail perfectly i was gonna say security i think you know just just having those expectations and maybe even the coach just kind of reinforcing that at the onset of the season, you know, our coach projections, that's what seems like be loud, we want y'all to be passionate. Um, so I think just kind of setting that expectation of, you know, it's okay to cheer, but let me do my thing. And if you feel, you know, things are going away, you know, sideways, let's talk about it after the game or, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So I just think setting expectations in the beginning, I think is good, but, but yeah, I, I, everything that I agree with. There was another guy that died last week at a basketball game. He was a 60. Yeah, my son. So ultimately, yeah, he got ultimately in the middle of a fight or whatever on the court. And he, I think, like, fell or whatever. And semi got, like, the fight was on top of him, I guess you could say. So he, he was in it. On. I saw that. Wow. He was in it, but then he got it. You know, he was on top of it. So I think the only thing would be security because, I mean, it's sad that you would need security at a little league anything. <laughs> ultimately. Right. 
But at the same time, if you got parents sometimes sneaking, you know, certain shot glasses in, in the little baby bag or whatever, at the game, nothing else would stop it unless it's security kind of thing. Like you could say no weapon, you know, have metal detectors, whatever, but sometimes it's regular fights. So it's no weapon you know, involved at all. So it would be that security to hopefully deter, you know, something escalating. Yeah. Well, no, this has been a <laughs> amazing topic, an amazing conversation. And I okay. wish we had more time to talk about it, but we're going to come back with some more later. So definitely want to thank you all, uh, the Smiths and Julian, Miss Lance, babe, okay. for being a part of today's show. Now, before we end, y'all know I got to provide our moms an uh, inspirational quote of the day. Um, this one is going to be by Maxim Grosky. And it says, only mothers can think of the future because they give birth to it in their children. Okay. So kind of like what we're talking about, that can actually be for both parents, but you know, I'm always looking for things specifically for the moms. But when you think about that quote, again, we are birthing this into our children. So we need to make sure that we are instilling when it comes to teamwork, positivity of it, not, um, you know, negative and always just arguing and, you know, ready to fight when something don't go your way. We got to make sure that they see that happening in us as well. Mm -hmm. Right. And so make sure that you're doing that. Play the part because your kids, like I always tell you, they watching y'all. But I definitely want to thank you for taking time for listening in today. Be sure to continue to like, follow, share, subscribe. Appreciate the support. And I want you to be sure to tune in to my next episode. I, I want to discuss godparents, okay? And if that's something that is still common in our generation, I know in my parents' generation, that was something very, very common. I must be honest. I have multiple godparents, yeah. only child. So yeah, I got a whole bunch of godparents. But then even their generation before that, it was just really big on a village, but the godparents was a term. So I want to really want to dig into that a little bit more and what the depths were then of a godparent versus what our villages are now. So be sure to tune in Tune in uh, next time as that's going to be the topic of discussion. But until then, be sure to keep your head up because your little one is watching and always admiring you. And lastly, I want you to be sure to continue to take care of yourself. Okay? I'm your host, Ashley L. And I look forward to seeing you next time on I'm the Mama Podcast. Take care. Bye.